There are many different gravel bikes available these days, but if you want to be really on trend, you'd buy one with a flat handlebar. Now, to some people, they might look like hybrid bikes, the kind of thing your mum might ride to the shops on. To other people, they are the coolest, most fun looking bikes available since the fat bike was invented. And yet to others still, people like me, they're retro mountain bikes, only with brakes that actually work. Sounds like heaven, but is it? Is there any point in putting a flat handlebar on a gravel bike? Are they more comfortable? Are they more fun? Are they faster? Well, we've done it. Converting our Canyon Grizzle with a perfect mix of Shimano's GRX gravel group set and XT mountain bike group set. But before we'd even ridden the bike, we then started thinking a little bit more. I mean, what would be better? A flat bar gravel bike or a drop bar mountain bike. Not many of them around, probably for good reason, quite frankly, but we know someone who's got one, and so we're gonna find out which is best in the ultimate test of weird freaks of cycling. The bikes, not the presenters. Yeah. This is Doddy. Despite his youthful good looks, he's been a mountain biker for a hundred years and has been leading up GMBN Tech since it started. There is a rumor that he once tried a road bike, but there were no witnesses and it has never been proven. He also claims not to own any spandex, which seems like a shame. Doddy, you um, seem to have missed the memo about wearing Lycra today, but that's okay. Talk us through that incredible looking bike. Well, so I, roadies often think that they actually invented a gravel bike, but 20 years back, mountain bikers were doing exactly this, really. So John Tomac was a legendary pro. And between the 80s and the 2000s, he won pretty much everything from cross country through to downhill. And what's more, he did a lot of that on a single bike, mountain bike with drop handlebars. He was like the original Matthew Vanderpool, wasn't he? Like road, mountain bike, although he raced BMX instead of cyclocross. Yeah, exactly that. So, um, well, I painstakingly recreated his bike from 1990 that at the World Championships that year, he actually got fourth place in the downhill. On drop handlebars. On drop handlebars. That is bonkers, isn't it? Now, Doddy's done a fantastic video over on GMBN Tech where he's talked us through both the modern bike and the original version. You need to check it out because it's an important piece of your cycling history. But right now, Doddy, I think we should put that through its paces against this. Whereas Tomac's bike from 1990 looked like something from the future, this cutting edge gravel bike looks more like the kind of bikes that Tomac's rivals were racing last century. Fully <laughs> rigid, skinny tires, light, simple, so elegant. Much like its rider. Actually no, not the simple bit. There is actually a point to this video though, isn't there? Because for many, I think a gravel bike is like a less capable mountain bike. Yeah, like mountain bike light. Yeah, exactly. So if you put drop handlebars on an average cross-country mountain bike, are you going to get the best bits of gravel, but with some mountain bike versatility thrown in? Yeah, I am genuinely interested to find out. There's part of me that's slightly concerned that we've taken two great bikes and made them a bit rubbish, but there's a potential that we've made two great bikes, still great, but just really different. Okay then, time for test number one. The fun test. The fun test. Now we have tried to quantify fun here on GCM before with a mix of complex algorithms and advanced facial recognition software. 42 year old man with a moustache wearing a hat looking neutral. 42? This is not right. It's got my age wrong to start with. But it didn't work. So I googled it and the internet suggested percentage of time spent smiling, occasions of laughter with another person or differential of joyful minutes minus painful minutes divided by total minutes. So Doddy is currently sporting joy cam. Oh yes. And then one last thing to get me in the mood, my joy pants straight out of 1990s mountain biking. Our test track has been carefully designed to combine both the best of traditional gravel with gravel plus, a simple mountain bike trail that's fast, flowy, and smooth. We can painstakingly analyze just how fun each bike is overall and then ascertain how much fun they were on the different types of trail. Doddy, you ready? I'm ready. You having fun yet? I'm always having fun. Good. <laughs> you look fantastic. Thank you. Right. 
Let's do it. <laughs> you are having fun, aren't you? I can hear you laughing. <laughs> <laughs> What's it actually like on a fire road, that thing? Um, oh, it just feels a little bit dead. And I think like, absolutely no disrespect to the frame, but it's like more of a leisure bike than a super lightweight performance bike. Right. One thing that becomes immediately clear is how much bigger the mountain bike is. Doddy is taller than me anyway, but the height and length of the bike is way more. And that's important because a longer wheelbase makes a bike feel more stable, often faster as well, but it does feel less nimble and agile. Well, at the moment on the hoods, it feels kind of natural to be honest. This is crunch time. You having fun? Uh, no, it's terrifying. <sighs> <laughs> nice. Well, I've got a grin. Feels like the slight bit of movement at the front end, so just put in horrible faces and because the because it's so narrow. No, the the width is okay. It's just because your weight is so far down by the front axle compared to where you're relatively normally. Yeah, percentage of joyful minutes versus painful minutes? Um, uh, probably 60, 40, I reckon. Yeah? Yeah. I feel a bit of pressure to have fun. It's <laughs> never a good thing, is it? <laughs> right, okay. You ready? Let's do it. All right. I'm smiling, that's a good sign. <laughs> I gotta say, fire roads are brilliant, aren't they? Ah, oh, who doesn't love a gravel track? I reckon there's things that make me joyful, Dottie, irrespective of what bike I'm on. Yep. Sun's out. I'm on riding in a nice, nice trail. Spring is here. I don't care what handlebars I got. Boy, does the gravel bike feel fast. It's nimble, but bordering on a handful. It makes me feel nervous. If you do stay upright though, it's definitely exciting. Oh man, that is really weird, isn't it? <laughs> My hands ah, and wrists are absolutely killing. I think I was concentrating so hard on not dying that I don't think I smiled once, except on the fire road. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I think this is probably just as much fun, but this absolutely sucks for there. <laughs> it sucks so much. <laughs> right, now time to analyse the footage. Before we give our official verdicts on how fun these bikes are, We've got to swap, haven't we? So, Doddy, you are now on our flat bar gravel bike, and I am about to have a go on the drop bar mountain bike. How are you feeling? I didn't think that made any sense, but I think this might make even less sense. <laughs> we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> oh, I hope we don't die. <laughs> this is uh, pleasantly light. Oh my God, this one just zips along. It feels quick, doesn't it? Yeah. This is so weird, because on the one hand, it's so familiar yeah. with, the, with the drops and the STIs. And then on the other hand, it's like, as soon as you turn it, you're like, hold on a second. <laughs> That's not a gravel bike. Both bikes are certainly comfortable though. In a straight line on the gravel track, the mountain bike feels like a steamroller, but the gravel bike too is comfortable. That shorter, more upright position is more relaxed than the drop bar equivalent. Whoa, oh my word. Feels like I'm suddenly riding like a massive horse, like a cart horse or something. Oh 
oh my word. There are times when I was like, oh, this is fun. And there are times when I was like, this is terrifying. I'll tell you what though, I, I really like that. Did you? Yeah. Oh yeah. So on the flat, right, well on the, on the gravel road riding up to it, the bottom bracket felt like it was out here. Really strange feeling. Oh, as in, because it's slack? Slack seat angle on it. Ah. I mean, that's not particularly slack on that, or particularly steep even, but so the bottom bracket's out in front of me. Twitchiness wasn't a problem, I didn't think. No? Suits the trail. Yeah. You're mostly sat down on that anyway, kind of a couple of cranks out of saddle, a couple of cranks. Yeah. I hate to say it, it was fun. Flat bar gravel bike is fun, I yeah. like it. Well, this well, one. More to the point, that's just not fun, that's terrifying. Yeah, yeah, there's a novelty factor. So sat in a saddle, going in a straight line, it, it just, well, it, inevitably it feels like a gravel bike because yeah. that's what the position is. And then I got out of the seat and suddenly the whole like front end of the bike completely changes <laughs> into like, I don't know, some scary kind of like jelly-like substance. Yeah. yeah, and there's no like response to it. It's just like, <laughs> whoa. And then on that on the, the single track, I don't think it's any faster, is it? Like no, it's... I think that's slower yeah. than, than this on the whole. I think you could, you'd probably ride it just as fast, you know, but it's, it didn't, didn't hold the speed very well. Well, think... we will find out shortly yeah. in test number two. Before we do that, we'll quickly tell you how we have created these hybrid machines and the exact lengths that we've gone to to get there. Whilst you can fit flat handlebars to basically any bike, you will need to make one or two adjustments. So the main one is that on a drop handlebar, your gear brake lever setup is fixed vertically, whereas on a flat bar, they're fixed horizontally. So of course you need to change both of those. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, I've got a GRX gravel group set on here. And so you will find that there are quite a few road and mountain bike components that work with it. So in this instance, I've got the electronic DI2 shifting. And so it was literally a case of plugging in some XT mountain bike shifters. And then if you're running a mechanical version, you'll find that you can get a Tiagra or a 105 flat bar shifter. So that comes from the road group sets. Now with brakes, there are a couple of different ways of doing it. The main issue is that mountain bike and road slash gravel bikes have a different mounting point for the caliper here. So on road and gravel, it's flat mount. Mountain bike tends to be post mount. And so there are two ways of doing it. In this instance, we have found a little known XT trekking range where the brake levers will fit and work perfectly with the flat mount GRX calipers. Or you could get a mountain bike brake set up and get an adapter to swap it from post mount to flat mount. Now for added mountain bike retro flair, I have kept my two by chain set. A front derailleur is a very rare sight on a mountain bike these days, not so on a gravel bike. And here I've got some pretty big gears built for going fast. So 4831 chain rings and an 11 to 34 cassette, which for mountain bike is super close ratio. For gravel bike, it's great. You get both the range you need and also smaller jumps between the gears. Then the final adjustment, quite a significant one as well, is the stem. So when you remove your brake levers from out there on the drops to back here on a flat section, you alter your position on the bike considerably. So you will need a longer stem, otherwise you'll be way, way too short on the bike. So unlike size bike, I've actually done loads of stuff to this. So underneath all of this mess is a perfectly rideable Canyon Grand Canyon mountain bike. Now it was all changed for everything to make this bike possible. So first up, we've got a GRX transmission on here. Uh, you'll probably spot an XT crank. That's just what we had lying around at the time. Now the coolest thing about the GRX on the brake levers, I can actually use a left-hand one to operate the dropper post. That is super cool. Uh, with the brakes though, so had to sort of think outside the box here to try and make things match up a bit. There are actually Ultegra post mounts on here. So they just happen to look the same color as the GRX component. So that works nicely. At the front end of the bike had some issues. So I normally ride a size XL bike. Uh, in theory, to turn it into a gravel bike, I would have been on a size large. So to get the handlebars in a roughly uh, correct position, I had to put a 35 mil stem on here rather than the 70 that was on here as standard. The bar is a monstrous 50 centimeter wide or 500 mil wide. Feels kind of cool, looks kind of cool. 
Manitou R7 fork on the front, looks a bit like Tomax bike. And then all of the wrap, um, this basically just vinyl with a hairdryer and a bit of plastic on the, on the rear wheel. So it kind of looks a little bit like one of Tomax bikes, but um, it definitely doesn't ride like one of them. Doddy, are you ready for the most important test now? Hmm? The speed test. Speed? That can't be more important than fun. <laughs> Mountain bikers, eh? Yeah, speed's more important than fun. <laughs> Do you know what feels weird? What's that? I don't normally set off on time trials with a strong sense that I'm gonna crash. <laughs> but these bikes kind of make me feel like I'm just one small slip away from... It's gonna be close, doom. I think, yeah. yeah. Okay, can you count me in? Yeah, do you want a three, two, one, go? Do you want to go on, go, or do you want to go on one? Three, two, one. Beeps. Ah, okay, all right. Like a downhill World Cup. Okay, right. Cool, right. Let's go! Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Didn't die that time, which is a bonus. Nice. We could hear you coming a mile off. That disc wheel does its job. I don't have to do that again, do I? Yeah, just one more time. Oh. Beep, 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 beep. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm just going to go now. That'll do. <laughs> oh. Hold on a sec. Most important thing first. That is sketchy. That is really slow. Or oh, it feels slow, feels really slow, and then coming back down the single track. It's weird, like it understeers, it just doesn't want to go around corners. So the whole time you constantly feel like you're about to fly straight on into the nearest tree. Oh, that was quick. That was quick. <sighs> Instant reaction. Much quicker. I mean, I'm still really slow, but much quicker. So much faster. That's so much more fun. And do you know what? You can find more grip on that. Yeah. I think the short wheelbase on those sort of turns, you can just carve the insides. I felt like on that, I was having to use all of the turns. Yeah. But I don't know how you felt. Well, I, I just said to the camera, I, I feel like this understeers so every corner i'm like oh, i'm not gonna get around this yeah. i'm not gonna get around this yeah. whereas that yeah you're right like you could be all over it yeah i mean if the front did step out you're on the deck but yeah but it's kind yeah. of like feels really good yeah right it's results time the most important test which was faster you reckon this one unfortunately i do think it was that one yeah it was indeed this one but not by much so on mine, I was eight seconds faster on the gravel drag yeah. to the start of the single track. And then I was one second faster on the single track. Compared Only to one? That. One second. So in total, what are we talking there? Nine seconds difference. I mean, forget the bikes. climb, this is about the fun, isn't it? And if that's only one second difference, that's crazy. Yeah. But that is more fun as well though. Well, that's it. Like, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it's, it's not that it's, massively faster but we both said it felt faster way faster and way more fun to ride as well agile and nimble and just felt like you're all over it the whole time yeah that was it It was really responsive yeah and it was yeah it was a handful but not in a bad way yeah and this one's kind of terrifying in places and I felt a lot slower which i can't say i'm not disappointed in tomac for it to be fair <laughs> <laughs> he's still the goat but hey I'm, I'm really surprised and i reluctantly wanted to like that yeah okay so the conclusion is then that definitely don't make a drop bar mountain bike but 
Would you make a flat bar gravel bike? I mean, what do you think the point of this bike is? Smashing around town, a bit of woodland, a bit of everything, to be honest. I, actually, it's a really usable bike. Kind of what we were saying earlier, like a modern day hybrid. Yeah. You give it a bit more, bit more welly, I think. Yeah. Now, I would only add to that that I felt like when you were going really fast, like it wasn't quite as easy and as fun to go fast on as a normal gravel bike with your drop handlebars. Like the position just is slower. It's going to slow you down on the road. It's going to slow you down off road. I don't want to say it because it's probably a bad word in matter my toes, but aerodynamics. Aerodynamically, it's not as good as a normal gravel bike. But then if that's not your bag and going super fast isn't your bag, it is fun. I think there is a point to a flat bar gravel bike. Yeah, I'm ashamed to say it, but I'd ride one. 100%. Right. It was well, good fun. Last question then, Dory. As a man who's been involved in mountain biking yeah. since the early days, does this take you back to retro mountain bikes? Yeah, I guess it kind of does. You got, you know, the rigid bike, the low front end, the ridiculously agile or nervous steering, whichever way you want to look at it. Tires that just about do the job. It, yeah, it does. I mean, um, not in the rose tinted way, but yeah, it gave me the same feeling, I think. <laughs> there we go then. Right, so in conclusion, flat bar gravel bikes are actually pretty good. Proven here in the battle <laughs> of weird bikes. Um, Dottie, thanks so much for, uh, for helping out and bringing your steed with you yeah i think that was his last outing <laughs> do make sure you check the video out on it though because like we said john tomac is an important piece of cycling history so make sure you check it out and also a big thanks to shimano as well for helping us out by putting together these two wicked bikes please give the video a big thumbs up as well if you've enjoyed it